This RapidMiner tutorial focuses on scoring unseen documents in RapidMiner and will show you how to build and apply the model to new documents. I'm using the Read Excel operator to import data from a spreadsheet which contains about 500 job postings together with the category in which they've been posted. I'm using the nominal to text operator to convert the job posting information to text and applying it to a single attribute which is a job description text, so job text. Then I'll perform some data transformation before I process them with the process documents from data operator. I'm using a cross validation to get the error rate range. Here I'm using a support vector machine. Apply the model, test the performance. I'll walk you through each of those steps. I'm using operators from the text processing and web mining extensions. If you don't have these extensions installed, go to the marketplace in the extensions menu and install from there. If you're missing any specific parameters or want to apply some expert settings, check you have show advanced parameters selected. I'm just going to add a breakpoint here and run the process to look at the raw data. From the result, you can see the different categories that are available. I only care about jobs in one category. Say I want to identify postings from one category which are related to a particular skill set, for example. When I look at statistics, details show the count of the different categories and it's already sorted by count, which is good. I'm going to pick the one that has the most entries, so food, beverage, hospitality. Here we have a few postings which are looking for a chef, cook and kitchen helper. Now as I said I only care about the jobs in this one category, so I can turn this into a two class problem by setting all the others to unknown. When I do that I'll end up with some examples which are part of the category I'm looking for, but as you can guess there are going to be many more which are not, so I have an unbalanced data set and we'll need to do something about that. So let's look at the pre-processing that I've prepared here. So the data is coming in. First I split the example set using a filter. I'm filtering for the categories that are not of interest for me. These are coming out here. These are the matched ones. And the unmatched ones are split off. These are with the category food, beverage, hospitality and are passed out through this port. Here I'm just overwriting all of those category values with a single value which I call unknown. It could also be anything else. Then I'm stitching things back up and define the category column to be the label, which is what we want to learn to predict. Before the modelling, I'm splitting the example set and store some of it in a holdout set for our scoring later. I'm using stratified sampling to maintain the class balance in the holdout set as well, and an 80-20 split, which means I will have about 100 examples reserved for later. Now back to the remaining data. To help our algorithm identify what's important and what's not, I've added a weight attribute here. With the default of 1 and 500 examples, we'd produce unnecessary small numbers, so I've set the total weight to 1000. So basically, the pre-processing is done. Now I go into process documents. You do want to create a word vector. I'm using the TFIDF vector in this regard. You can check other videos to see how that works. You want to make sure that add meta information is checked so that it passes the labels through the process documents operator. You can keep the text or not, it doesn't really matter. Inside, I begin with the extract content operator, which is from the web mining extension. It strips out all HTML code and tags from the text and leaves everything else. Turn them into lowercase so that you can match up the same words that have different cases. Tokenize them, which means split a document into its various words. And filter out stop words, which just add clutter. And stemming, which gets rid of the suffixes of words so you can make computerize, computerized or computerizing all the same word and count them the same. And then generate n-grams. I've tried a few different ones but unigrams are the best in this case here. 
I'm only dropping the 1% least common words. Since I've added an extract content operator in the text processing, I use the select attributes operator to filter out some of that unnecessary amount of data tags that this parameter adds, like the language and document title. I'll add a breakpoint before and after to show you. These are all just blank in my case, so I can get rid of them by selecting only columns with no missing values. Then I have the cross validation. One thing to note is that I've added a normalization here just in front of the support vector machine. It's useful for the support vector machine to have the data normalized because it can then balance more easily which column it learns from, especially if it has so many columns like here in text mining. Then I group this pre-processing model and the support vector machine to build a model. Always do things like that inside the cross-validation and make sure to tie them together. Otherwise, you end up with incorrect accuracies or you may scale your data wrong before scoring. Over here, I've unchecked use the example weights to get the original values in our confusion matrix. Now to use this support vector machine or any classifier on a new document, and you want to classify that new document, you need to do a couple of things. First, you need to store the word list. So this one creates a word list, which basically counts the frequency of the words in the documents. I just use the store operator and then give it a name, word list, and it'll store that word list in the repository. I'll use that later. Then after cross-validation, you want to store the model because that's the model that I built that's learned how to discriminate between documents based on the frequencies of words. So I use the store operator and store the model in the repository as well. If I check the repository, it's got the word list, the model and the testing set there. Now I'm going to run that. We get about 96% accuracy, which seems great, but this is due to the unbalanced data. Now, given I have more unknown, if I had a model just predicting that majority class, it would already end up in the high 70s, but it would have no real value at all. So the more interesting results are the recall and precision here, and they're looking decent for the small number of documents. So now I'm going to do the scoring part. I'm reading the data and the word list that I saved previously because the model needs the exact same words as before. Process documents is the same operator as before, but now with the data from the holdout set, but it has the exact same settings which are necessary. TFIDF, add meta information, drop the 1% fewest words. It has the same internal operators as well, so extract content, transform cases, lowercase, tokenize on non-letters, filter stop words, stem and generate one grams. Again, we are removing the empty columns created by the extract content here. Then you apply the model that you learned on the new data. It's retrieved and is connected into the model port with the apply model. And then the data goes in here and then it's going to give you the predictions. So that new data is a hundred documents. Most of them are from the unknown category. Now, in reality, we wouldn't know what the labels are as that's the whole point of applying a model. But here we do it this way for demonstration purposes. I'll just run that. It doesn't give us a performance because we pretended there are no labels and this is scoring of unseen data, but it does give us the predictions. 
with some food, beverage, hospitality, and many unknown predictions, which makes sense with this unbalanced data set. When you compare it with the actual labels, you see there are almost no false positives. Some were not captured, which should have been categorised as food, beverage, hospitality. All the incorrect ones are with confidences of 0.5 or less, which is the default threshold and something that can be varied as needed. So you could use that in a variety of applications. You could use sentiment analysis or look at stock prices or see which grant applications are more likely to succeed and things like that. So that's how you save your word list and model and then apply them later on data that the model hasn't seen before. This concludes this tutorial on applying a model to new documents in RapidMino.